I'm Dr. Dan Rubin. We're in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I'm here with Dr. Belinda Barclay White, Dr. Jeannie Stryker. This is the third in a series of videos on the use of cryotherapy for the treatment of malignant disease. And this part is a candid conversation about various aspects about cryotherapy. We talked about who's a candidate, we've talked about what the procedure's like, we talked about how the history of cryotherapy, we've talked about the use of naturopathic medicine and uh, related therapies alongside it, but the subject is huge. This is a this is a true like future of medicine, like you've said to me before. Oh, absolutely. Interventional radiology just can kind of take it where others are afraid to go. Right. Why is that? You know, a lot of people. I'd say ninety percent of the people in the country are just you know they're they're going to do what they feel safe with. What they were trained <laughs> to do. Okay, so I I trained with the father of interventional radiology, mm -hmm. and I was his last fellow before he passed away. So I mm -hmm. feel really blessed and fortunate. Okay. And we didn't turn anything away in Charleston, South Carolina. And even at Dartmouth, we didn't turn things away. We tried everything. And how do you think medicine evolves? It's by trial and error. We're not experimenting on people, but it's it's innovative and you've, you've got to be creative and you have to think about some of these things. So when I hear a remark where there's not enough data, um, that's crazy. Which is what some people will say, like, why would you not go to do breast surgery for a 1.5 centimeter primary breast cancer when we have safety data and that and efficacy data? Yeah. Or is yeah. that a question? That no, no, it, it's a question. I mean, it's all, you know, thinking outside the box. We've been doing it that way for mm -hmm. 50 years. I learned lumpectomy and radiation in medical school and it mm -hmm. hasn't changed. I don't know that. And I yet I diligently try and find smaller and smaller cancers mm -hmm. that are more and more easily, we're over treating them, we're over treating them. So we have to think outside of the We're box. We're overtreating them. As we a, are as overtreating. I absolutely agree yeah. with you, and I think that's where you get the suppression of the immune system, mm -hmm. and you. And, and so what happens is the immune system doesn't see what's going on, right? And the people are like, "Well, I feel like I've been let down. I was told I was cured. I had radiation. I had surgery, and then I see the recurrence cases, and I'm like, we've got to change this up, you know." So. You know, it's like back in the day, people, what they do if they had uh, peripheral arterial disease, they had their leg amputated, yes. you know, or they did bypass. Just well, cut we're, it all off. we're the doctors that actually went in and wrote a rooter, opened up arteries, you know, mm -hmm. used balloon to open it up or a stent. And so you get the evolution of medicine. And we don't want to be doing what we've been doing for the last 20 years because it's not working. Well, this is, um, cryotherapy is obviously highly technological, but using low technology type of treatment, using cold. Yes. Like I was saying, it's incredibly naturopathic. And you said something very striking, Dr. Stryker, was that <laughs> the immune system, I think, can't see what's going on. How does cryotherapy let the immune system see what's going well, on? Well, there's a two-stage um, effect. Mm -hmm. So what, what cancer does is it actually causes a local immune suppression. So I always tell patients, it's like there's a, a veil yeah. over it, you know, or, you know, you have those... Uh, is those, it cloaked from the immune system? So they don't yes. want the immune system mm -hmm. to see it. So what you're doing, first of all, is you're creating a trauma that's like, oh, mm -hmm. my gosh, there's something going on in the body, you know, and then... alert. alert. Right, alert, and then you also, then you're killing. So you alert, and then you kill with... And then a, you can, the immune system is alerted and can find dead cancer pieces? So absolutely. But so here you, you're killing locally. You're not killing everything, you're killing like that particular tumor. Like chemotherapy is maybe locally. infused into the body, yes. and you're going to kill the bad yeah. with the good. Yes. And hope that you get enough bad kill, and there's not enough good kill so that the person survives. Yes. Exactly. Well, and the other thing too, not to get so technical, but mm -hmm. um, you know, you certain switches get turned on genetically, and, mm -hmm. and certain switches. With cryo. Well, in general, we don't mm -hmm. know why, but oh. the, certain switches get turned on and certain switches get turned off. The thing that cryoablation will do mm -hmm. is it re-regulates everything, so the the good helper cells get increase in number, and the the regulatory cells, what we call, you know, down-regulated, but it means that the switches get turned off. I mean, this is like some health things that we've seen. There's a trend towards like cryotherapy chambers in wellness centers where somebody goes in. Not necessarily, That's like for weight loss. And right. Like I mean, that, right? But it's like a health thing. And then what about sort of like the traditional polar bear plunge or the New Year's plunge? I mean, the, what you're basically saying when that reg Shocking regulates the system. everything you, via coldness that we yes. respond to cold and there's certain health benefits to living at altitude or living with cold and that you're saying that cold has a specific epigenetic response in the body absolutely and then, and then that's where we talked about the scopal effect 
where this you know is an important one. Thank you. you know the Abscolco effect is where the dead tumor antigens in the immune system come together, bind, and then the the army is like, I got to go out and search and destroy anything that looks remotely like that. So one thing I wanted to bring up is that what I have found um, is that sometimes on imaging you won't see certain things when you do the cryoablation and i and i do immunotherapy as well we need to talk about that too this is a big part of your practice. but what ha what happens is is that you may have a couple cancer cells over here in the liver and we're dealing with the breast and what happens is afterwards like say three months later you, you do a follow-up imaging you're like well i have dr striker i have lesions down my liver well they were there all along mm -hmm. but the you have infiltration of immune cells that are going in, attacking it, it may not necessarily be an active cancer, but you've got this infiltration of immune cells, so it, it's exposed these so hidden cancer there's, cells. There's maybe the viability of the cancer cells is low or no, but you're seeing something in the liver because you have more cells in that given area because you've had immune recognition and infiltration. And there were cancer cells there. So, But which we wouldn't have seen, and this is where patients need to understand, when they get, um, you know, like say they get surgery, they get, they get uh, systemic chemotherapy or radiation, they're like, well, I thought that I was cured. And then two years later, ah, it's because the cancer cells actually were there. They were just dormant. They were dormant. And so the goal that I always say to patients is I want to create a chronic dormant state for you. And this is what us as naturopathic oncologists have tried to do and have been doing, um, but cryotherapy really just it, it accentuates it and helps and does it you know, more abruptly and, and just strongly and aggressively yeah. is create this, it creates an antigenic exposure. Right, I like to think of it as a vaccination, that's how I explain exactly. it to patients. Mm -hmm. Personalized vaccine, person it's that, yours. Yeah. But non-toxic. But so non toxic. It's not, it's not the, yes. the types of vaccinations yeah. that are in the new. No, world. it's your, it's, it's, it's your your ideal. Yeah. It's your body responding to this cancer. Yeah. Now, I, I will inject uh, immunotherapy drug post ablation, and I always tell patients, I can't, I can't stick a needle in an ice cube, but I can stick a needle in a Slurpee. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and so now you have this powerful, longer acting. Mm -hmm. um, um, personalized vaccine. So you're keeping the immune system on alert, not just for 30 days, but right. for like 180 days. Right. And then, so you're talking about that as the second melt is happening, then you'll put immunotherapy inside Correct. the previously or mm -hmm. just ablated tumor. Yes. And there's active immune cells in there. And do they survive the cold? The, the immune cells? Yes. So if they're in the tumor, are they ones that are residing there or are they now migrated to the tumor because of the... They've migrated infection? to the tumor. And one of the things that... So I always tell patients, get off the internet, please, because when mm -hmm. you're looking at mm -hmm. immunotherapy, you're looking at systemic. They're giving it to you intravenously. Mm -hmm. And there can be secondary side effects. Mm -hmm. But when you're sticking the tumor directly, you're using less of a dose. Okay. It's going into the tumor. It's not going systemic. Uh, and you want that, that longer lasting immune effect. And then we support that with nutrients, lifestyle issues, making sure people are sleeping, make sure they're laughing and have good interpersonal relationships. We're making sure that they're losing weight because, you know, high levels of visceral fat and percentage of body fat. And Insulin IBM resistance. Are, and so absolutely all of them. That's the big part that we play as naturopathic doctors. You and I have put yeah. patients together for many years. Yeah. And, um, and Dr. Stryker, you spoke at the Naturopathic Oncology Convention, the Oncology Association of Naturopathic Physicians, this past, uh, past year in 2019. And I made a lot and, of new friends, yeah, which I love because wonderful. I get to refer to, you know, if they're in different places in the country, you Absolutely. know. And, and one you thing I wanted to bring up, too, is that uh, they don't necessarily have to fly in here to see you. To our talk, In Scottsdale? Absolutely. We can help remotely. Exactly. Absolutely. And patients need to understand that, you know, yeah. that it's a win-win and we all work together because yes. we, we yes. went, we work together because we want our, our world to be we're better. we're taking care of the patient. You yes. know, we, we, we're looking at the whole patient and rather than going to this doctor who's going to do this and this doctor is going to do this, you know, we, we are trying to encompass the whole patient and do the best thing for that patient. Collaboration is key. And yes. Ultimately better. And, yeah. and, you know, they're filled with fear. So the best scenario is I'm non-judgmental, you're non-judgmental, you're non-judgmental. Yeah. I don't say to somebody who comes in with a 10 centimeter tumor protruding out of their breast or any other organ system, because I, I, I wanted to know 
how come they got here? What happened? Yeah. And it's because we let them down by our very judgmental, uh, you know, bedside mm-hmm. manner when mm-hmm. I took the Hippocratic Oath seriously and said, I'm here to help you and keep you safe. And, yeah. and you know, and that's my goal is to, to help you. And if I, and I have to collaborate with people like you because mm-hmm. there's more than one reason why people get cancer. Yes. And it's not genetic. Actually, I, t- I used to tell patients when they came to see me, well, I don't have a family history. You're the one I worry yeah. about the most because yeah. there's mm. no family so history. Many. You think you're good. Yes. So, and so many environmental things that oh, you deal yeah. with. Deal which, with. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This has been a lot of fun. It's been a wonderful discussion. Uh, cryotherapy can help so many people. And thank you for doing what you're doing and collaborating. And thank you very much. Thank you.